My name is Dr Catherine Tonnery. I'm a senior lecturer here at the University of Greenwich. What exactly is your research about? Okay, so um, ultrasonic cavitation is the process by where we use um, ultrasound to make um, gas bubbles in liquid metals and that is due to the pressure in the metals it gets very, very low due to the pressure waves from the ultrasound. Uh, this creates voids uh, which fill up with hydrogen gas which is dissolved in the metals, aluminium, when it's molten, readily dissolves hydrogen and part of that comes from the actual production process where water vapour will settle on the top creating aluminium oxide and therefore stripping out the hydrogen. Are you basically using gas bubbles to take out impurities of materials? Well yeah, it's, it's not quite take out impurities but we're using it to break up those impurities to make those impurities useful essentially. So we've got the impurities, they're always going to be there so we're just making them useful rather than not useful. What is it like researching at Greenwich Uni? I've been here since my PhD. I did my PhD here um, too long ago to mention. Um, and I've, I've been here ever since, uh, first as a research fellow. And I've, I've actually done a wide range of topics. I've, I've settled on um, ultrasonics now, but uh, my PhD was actually in shaping polymers. So I've, I've got a big, long history here and it, it's a great place to work. Otherwise, I wouldn't have stayed. My team is specialised in numerical modelling and we basically look at developing models to show what's actually really happening during a process. Because obviously you can look at a process and say, well, I think the pressure's doing that, but I'm not quite sure. But we know what the flow is, so we can measure the flow, but not the pressure. But so if we develop a numerical model showing the flow, we should be able to calculate the pressure from that when we're doing the numerical model, which you won't necessarily know otherwise. Um, I've got a colleague who works heavily in the solidification of metals, so he's got a, a grain refinement, uh, a grain model, so this shows these growing crystals. And it's really, really cutting edge research. And we're probably one of the world experts in the modeling of material science. What we can do with this technique is we can take a metal that is just generic aluminium and we can make it at least 50 to 60% stronger just by treating with ultrasound. Wow. So that means your research could be helping something like the aviation industry. The aviation industry obviously uses metals a lot and weight equals fuel consumption basically when it comes to aeroplanes. Any added weight means they need that much fuel to get from A to B. This is why when you go on an airline they're really, really, really keen and your bags are underweight otherwise they charge you more because that affects their fuel consumption and that affects their costs. So if we can reduce the weight of aircraft by introducing more and more light metals, by using these light metals we can therefore remove some material and if we can make those light metals stronger we can actually use less of them when we're already using them because you need less material for the same strength. So what does that have to do with fizzy drinks? Well I thought of this as a, as a way to explain how these bubbles are formed and this is due, due to pressure. Now hopefully everybody knows that if you pour a fizzy drink really really quickly into the bottom of a glass you'll just get it foaming really really high up. If you do it gently down the side of a glass it will not fizz up quite as much. Now the primary reason for that if it's slow you're slow enough to get mostly what's known as laminar flow and laminar flow is where the flow is in streamlined. If you're pouring very fast you'll end up with turbulent flow and therefore the turbulent flow forms little eddy currents and those eddy currents are circulations and in the middle of circulation you get a pressure drop. So that's reducing the pressure, a bit like we have in the ultrasound, you're reducing the pressure down and therefore these gases are coming out of solution. If you pour it down the bottom of the glass, because of the pressure created by the turbulent flow, you are getting a large amount of bubbles forming. If, however, I pour gradually down the side of the glass, I'm keeping the flow relatively laminar and we are not really getting much of any bubbles forming on top of it. So this is very interesting to see, but how does it relate to metals? Okay, so when I was talking earlier about cavitation and we, we produce these bubbles using the ultrasound, that again is this low pressure. So the low pressure is coming from the ultrasound waves there rather than the turbulence. The analogy here is the turbulence. The turbulence is producing the low pressure. Now in ultrasonics, we're producing the low pressure with pressure waves because sound is a pressure wave. So you get these pressure waves which are high enough that you dissolve gases from the solution that much quicker and therefore we're getting lots and lots of these cavitation events which are breaking up our impurities and therefore leading to 
more nucleation sites leading to stronger metals. If I was to recreate what you're saying, yeah. in my sort of basic language, it would be that ultrasonics are really high pressure sound waves. Yeah. And you are using those high pressure sound waves to create bubbles, yeah. which then focus on the impurities in metals and basically eliminate them. Yeah, they, they, they basically shatter them into sort of hundreds of pieces, so they're much, much smaller. So that's how fizzy drinks relates to making stronger metals.